Hi everybody, welcome to Beyond the Lines. My name is Sarah, I'm the artist band Pinselgeschichten and today I'm gonna finish the Scotch Pearls in the Outlander coloring book with a couple of gel pens and colored pencils and I'm gonna talk to you about how I want to add a little more oomph with a little bit of uh, colored pencil, why I uh, shade things a certain way and where I'm not shading anything uh, with colored pencils and um, how I work with metallic gel pens and such to add just the tiniest little bit of detail in the end. So I hope you enjoy. So let's try and finish off this page. I'm gonna start with colored pencils. I've got my whole set of polychromos next to me and I'm gonna start with Claire's hair. Um, just adding a little bit of texture to it, a little bit more of a lively color. And I'm using, uh, what are you, brown ochre as my first color. And then I'm gonna bring in this one here and that is called Bister just to stay a little closer to the burnt umber that uh, I had used as the underpainting. And of course, I can't live without the sepia when it comes to dark browns and shading and such. It's either Van Dyke or sepia that I like to bring in. So I just add a tiny little bit here and there. Same goes for the other side. I'm not gonna cover up the whole painting with colored pencils. I just do so here for the hair because I don't like that line work very much. I mean, I know why it's there, but for me there could have been just the outlines of the hair and I would be able to shade everything accordingly, but I get why it's there. I'm uh, pretty sure it's just a lovely help for very many um, new artists that just started coloring rather recently and for them to have a little bit of help of where light and shadow goes is a lovely thing. It's just <laughs> a little irritating for me the way it is uh, put in. It's the same thing that I said uh, for the groom. It almost feels like somebody put a white piece of paper over the screen uh, on a TV and traced light and dark, though I know this did not happen for, because this picture is not in the show. So I'm gonna use the same light brown, so the brown ochre for uh, a little more of a shading here on the fingers of Jamie, just adding a little more. Very little though. This is quite the fast process to 
to uh, add even a little more oomph to a page. Just having the underpainting done, having the majority of shading done and just adding a little more colored pencil on top to enhance contrast. Like that you can color a page rather quickly. That's maybe also why I like that certain kind of coloring process so much with the um, watercolor underpainting and putting a little bit of um, colored pencil on top for the final little details there. So on to the other side. Going in here at the palm underneath the thumb. I'm just working with those lines here a little more. Just a tiny bit, not too much though. Again, I don't want to cover up my previous shading work that I had done with colored, um, with watercolor. Just a little bit of enhancement. Uh, I'm gonna use the same color now for Claire uh, to add just a tiny little bit of detail slash very soft shading. I uh, have the, the lightest touch I can master. Since she has very fair, ooh, that was a little too much even. Uh, since she has the lightest and fairest skin tone, there's not gonna be a lot of shading, but a little bit has to be done to just make it look real or uh, close to real when it comes to light and dark or light and shadow as the professionals say. Feathering in that very light brown here. Uh, that's I need a little more with even a lighter touch, so feathering it in just a little bit more. And I'm okay with having those lines visible. I don't want this too smooth of a transition. It's definitely supposed to look like I put color pencil on top of um, watercolor. So I don't need to blend for 1500 days and make it super smooth. Just add a little bit. Same goes for underneath uh, the pearls, just a tiny little bit of a shadow. And again, I'm using 
the lightest touch I can master. The paper has quite a bit of tooth so the pencil lays down very easily because of the watercolor underneath. It uh, enhances the texture of the paper, makes it a little more rough and uh, quite willing to take uh, colored pencil even more. And now I can move on to um, the pearls. So I want a warm gray, a little bit of a darker one. And I'm gonna use my luminance pencil too. So first of all, the warm gray because I want to shade those pearls a bit and then set a highlight uh, with the luminance. And the luminance works a little better for me here than, um, than the uh, Prisma, uh, not Prisma color, the um, Polychromos pencil does. So I'm just gonna start with that dark warm gray and that is by the way warm gray number four. So I'm just shading it. I'm using the lines that have been given to me by the illustrator. To put down a soft shadow. You can see how quickly I can work. It's really amazing. I really like that combo of supplies, I have to tell you, over and over again. Onto the Luminance White Pencil to add a few highlights. Just a tiny little bit that I'm lightening up that beige watercolor underneath. It's not very visible because the, the color itself is rather on the light part of the spectrum. But it makes for a tiny smooth difference. So I'm definitely gonna take the time and put in that white pencil. Just this tiniest bit of shadow around the pearls 
just enhance it a little more towards ooh, the lower part of the necklace. Because if you remember from last week's video, I had said I would shade towards the bottom. So I'm gonna enhance that shadow here on the lower part and add a little bit of a shadow here underneath these three dangly pearls. And uh, then I'm gonna go in and shade the golden bobs here a bit. Very, very little though, because I want the shimmer to stay, like stay visible. I'm gonna add a gel pen on top later on, but I need a tiny little bit of a shadow for those bigger golden baubles here. There we go. Now I can move on to the dress. And uh, I'm gonna take my trusty indigo. <laughs> How many of you have been waiting for that, huh? Pro probably everybody who has ever seen a video of mine. So this is actually pattern. So I'm just gonna go over all of these uh, patterns here and just fill them in with indigo pencil. Just a little hideous, but well, doesn't matter. It has to be done. And on top of the um, Payne's Gray, the blue doesn't look too blue, if you know what I mean. It's, uh, it has a bluish tint, of course. But it could also be just a very, very, very dark gray. I actually like that there's a blue tint to the pattern. Just adds another color. <clears throat> Makes this not too monochrome looking like two gray. And I might just time lapse this bit because this is not as uh, interesting to watch, maybe, um, like me going through all of these swirls here and just simply coloring them uh, indigo blue. So let's have a tiny little bit of music and spare you from sitting here for an hour and watching me color swirls in indigo blue.
Okay, so all the swirls are colored in and I'm gonna use a little bit of um, a very light gray to shade the lace. Uh, I'm gonna go for a cool gray, really just a very light tone. Uh, this is cool gray number two. Just gonna sharpen my pencil and uh, then I can go ahead with a little bit of shading. just going over everything. It doesn't matter that I go over uh, the dark gray, dark blue bits as well. Just can go on top. Nothing will um, smudge or smear in this regard. And I just can add a super light gray touch to the lace because it's supposed to be white so only very little shading is in order hardly visible but it is there and it rounds up the uh, picture itself so just putting that in and I'm currently shading towards the bottom again because that's what I set out to do for this particular picture here. Now I'm adding a shadow here as well uh, on the lower part of the décolleté, as the French say, just to have a little bit more of a shadow not gonna do so or not as heavily on the sides of the um, uh, of the dress or of the lacy bits so I'm getting smaller and smaller with my shading here on the sides just shading the lower part not the upper part same here, just the lower part and very, very thinly shading around the, um, uh, the seam of the dress. So now I can actually move on to um, gel pens already and finish up the video because uh, all of my color oh, no I forgot something I was a little too quick I need a little bit of shading underneath the um, underneath the lace there has to be a little more detail so I'm grabbing my paints gray pencil that is not in my set but in a box to the side of um, my uh, desk because I do have it in that pencil extender and it doesn't fit into the tin anymore. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that dark gray. Uh, where things cast a bit of a shadow. Very little only, because the majority of the shading is in already, because uh, I have done that with the watercolors. Thank you. 
singles here for these little nooks just a tiny bit more of a shadow ouch shouldn't bump my feet you'd say huh so just a bit more over here on these tiny bits and that's what I had mentioned in last week's video that I would do that with colored pencil and not watercolor because these bits are just too tiny to shade well with watercolor. adding very very little uh, pigment just uh, you can see I'm working quite quickly and I'm just adding little bits of shadow here and there not being too precise there's just supposed to be the indication of a shadow so another little bit of Shading there in that big nook of the lace. bit of lace. Ooh. That's where my pencil wants to go into the barrel, though I did not approve that. There we go. And uh, now I can move on to the gel pens. I definitely want the gold one, but I also want the want the silver one because there's tiny little applications here on the um, on the uh, lace that um, I want to have a little bit of like silver embroidery on. Uh, as to not have the lace look too flat but I'm gonna start out with the gold gel pen and the necklace I'm just giving those bits here uh, <clears throat> the golden color and since I didn't put golden uh, neo color two everywhere. I'm gonna color in those tiny little bobs with the gel pen here. So these little roundels would have been too little to color well with uh, the uh, watercolor so I think it's way easier to just color them with gel pen so that 
these final tiny little details are there. Um, I might add a little bit of a white gel pen to to have some of the highlights on uh, the pearls really stand out. But first I'm gonna finish the gold and the silver. I'm not putting gel pen all over those big <clears throat> golden uh, round bits of the uh, of the necklace. Just putting it where I shaded previously. So remember that I put a little bit of colored pencil on top of the golden watercolor. I'm just going there to add a little bit of gel pen on these spots. I think that is a nice way to play with light and shadow with uh, metallics. So here it is towards the right hand side. And gel pen on the little bobble. And those tiny last little bits here need to have a little bit of gold to <clears throat> the clasp as well. <clears throat> that is the gold work done. Now I can move on to the silver and uh, activate my pen first. Just add a tiny little bit here. These tiny patterns because I think they are embroidered maybe. At least I would like that a lot on um, a piece of lace if there's even more intricate uh, accessory on it. So let's go with my preference there and have a tiny little bit of embroidery. It's just a very tiny little detail and maybe way more subtle than uh, you'd think so, you maybe not see it on the first look, but I know it's there and I know that I like these kind of tiny details. So why not add them and play with them a bit? And as you can see, I can work fairly quickly with uh, my gel pen and get those miniature details um, worked on and completed. Just a little more and I think, yeah, second to last little half circle of lace to be colored in. And the last one, which is this one here. Adding the silver. And now I can add white gel pen. Uh, 
uh, to some of the pearls. So I want a little bit here and uh, here. Just really have a very light highlight. Since the light is coming from the top, And I'm just pretty much concentrating on these pearls here, not all of the pearls. Well, this gets a highlight and this one gets a highlight. And I shouldn't smudge previous highlights, so let's paint that in again and have a highlight here. The same goes for these dangly pearls, not the other ones because there's not a lot of light that hits. So let me check my page, see if I like it or if I think I need to add something. I think this is finished. So I'm going to stop the video now and um, see you back next week, hopefully, for the next page. Thank you very much for, for watching. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. The blog post will be up by now for all the supplies that I use. So you can hop on over to my webpage pinselgeschichten.de and um, take a peek there and um, find out or reread what all of these uh, supplies here were that I used. And uh, I'm gonna see you next week with, um, let me give you a sneak peek. I'm gonna work on this page next time round. So uh, I hope you had fun and enjoyed uh, watching along and um, I'm gonna see you very soon. Have a wonderful and creative a uh, productive kind of a week and uh, take good care guys. Thank you for watching. Bye!